To my channel if you're new here you're welcome my name is Oti I create content on sewing tutorials and turban cap if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for sticking around I really appreciate you in today's video I'll be showing us on how to make Zara cap trending Zara cap then I'll also be showing us on how to make two different designs to be attached to the Zara cap I'll be using this plain satin fabric to make the Zara cap and um, I'll be using this long strip and crinoline to form a rose to be attached to the back of the Zara cap. I'm actually going to be showing us two different designs that you can attach to the back of your Zara cap to beautify the cap. For the second design, I'll be using this African print. I'm making two Zara cap with two different designs. I'm showing us two different designs that you can fix to the back of the cap to beautify the cap. One will be bow, while one will be rose. So I'm going to be using this African print for the bow design, while I'll be using this satin fabric for the rose design so let me start with the satin fabric you can use carton to replace this marco you can also use color stay to replace this marco if you can't get this marco where you recite so you can use wording you can use carton you can also use color tape to replace the marco. For the marco, the measurement that I'm working with is 20 inches by 3 inches. This is going to be for the satin. Then for the African print, the measurement that I have is 2.5 inches by 20 inches 20 inches by 2.5 inches please note this wideness is not standard you can decide to use 3 inches or 4 inches it depending on how wide you want the cut to be so for the african print i'm going to be using 2.5 inches width of this marco then for the satin fabric i'm going to be using three inches wideness for the satin fabric so let me start with the satin fabric then the measurement of the base this is for my base the measurement that i have is 25 inches by 16 inches 25 inches by 16 inches so the next thing to do the next thing to do i'm going to fold the fabric into two and i'm going to notch the midpoint I'm going to fold the marco into two. I'm going to notch the midpoint as well. I'm going to place the marco like so. This is the wrong side of the fabric. Like so. I'm going to make sure that it aligns with the midpoint of the fabric. This notch part. I'm going to make sure that it aligns with the midpoint of the marco notch part 
must be aligned together so i'm going to as you fold over the marco make sure that you have excess fabric because we are going to fold in these rough edges i'm going to fold it in with about half an inch i'm going to fold it in with about half an inch let me pin it down i'm going to fold it in inward with about half an inch You pin it down. I fold it inward with about half an inch. I fold the rough edges inward with about half an inch then i will also come over to the i will come over to the end of the marker where the marker stops i'm going to pin it down i'll move to this other side and do the same thing As I folded the fabric over the marco, I folded the rough edges inward with about half an inch and I pin it down. Then I move to the end of the marco at the left side, I pin it down. I move to the end of the marco at the right side, I pin it down. So the next thing to do, I'm going to take to my sewing machine. I'll first of all, I'm going to sew a straight stitch like so. Then after that, I'll move to this end I'll sew a straight stitch on the left, then I'll go to the right and sew a straight stitch on the right as well. I'll quickly do that and show us the next step to take. Then on this Ankara fabric, I'm going to repeat the same thing. Exactly what I did to this satin fabric, I'm going to also repeat the same thing on this African print. I've sewn it as you can see. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it into two. I've sewn the African print as well. My head circumference is 23 inches. 23 inches divided by two is 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to measure 11 and a half. This is 11 and a half. So from this 11 and a half inches, I'm going to sew it like so and cover it like this, the normal way we normally cover our turban cap. Then I'm going to repeat the same thing on this African print as well. My head circumference is 23 inches. Divided by 2 is 11 and a half. I'm going to measure 11 and a half. This is 11 and a half. So I'm going to sew the normal way we normally sew our turban cap. After that, I'm going to trim out the excess fabric. I'll take to my sewing machine. I'm going to sew on this mark line. After that, I'm going to trim out the excess fabric. Then I'm going to gather the back. I'm going to show us on how to do it. So let me quickly take to my sewing machine and quickly sew on this curved line. 
and sew on the fabric as well i will trim out the excess fabric then i will show us on how to gather the back it's very easy to make as you can see i've sewn it as you can see so i'm going to use my shear scissors to trim out the excess fabric with my needle and thread i'm going to gather this back the normal way we normally gather our turban cap i'm starting from here i'm going to leave this band i'm going to start gathering it from here I'm going to sew it backward to secure it firmly. Then I will lock my stitch. I'm going to repeat the same thing on this African print as well. This is a Zara cap. As you can see, it is very easy to make. This is a Zara cap. So I'm going to repeat the same thing on this african print as well you this is how the zara cap looks like as you can see it is very easy to make you can make this in different colors as you like this is the front and this is the back it is very easy to make so the next thing to do i'm going to make a design two different designs to be attached to the back of it you can rock it plain like this if you like you can also add trimmings to it it has different width you can decide to make it higher or shorter it depends on your preference as you can see the width of this is higher than this it depends on the style you want to make like mine i always prefer to have different sizes if i'm also working on trimmings if i'm working on trimmings assuming i want to add trimmings to it i'm going to go for this height you can decide to add trimmings to further beautify it you can decide to play around with the cap you can decide to wear it plain or you beautify it with trimmings You can decide to do any design of your choice for the bow design the measurement that i have is 14 inches by 12 inches 14 inches by 12 inches i've already infused the back of the design with a stay with an interfacing. I've already infused the fabric with an interfacing just to make sure that my 
design stance family so the next thing to do i'm going to fold it into two like so then i'm going to take to my sewing machine i'm going to sew half an inch like so i'm going to sew half an inch then i'm going to sew half an inch and stop somewhere here i'm going to leave about two inches opening i'm going to leave about three inches opening then I'm going to sew half an inch, like so, top here. Then these three inches opening, I will use it to turn the fabric to the right side. This is for my bow design. Then for my rose design, I have a long strip of 60 inches in length. Long strip of 60 inches in length. The width of the strip is six and a half inches by 60 inches in length so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to take a crelonine next thing i'm going to do i'm going to take crelonine this will help me this will help my rose to stand firm at the back so i'm going to place the crinoline at the middle then i will use the fabric to cover it the crinoline will be inside the fabric i will arrange it properly The crinoline will be inside the fabric like so. Then the next thing to do, I'm going to take to my sewing machine. I'm going to sew at the edge of the crinoline. I'm going to sew it straight down. I've sewn it as you can see. I've sewn it. And I've also sewn this as well. As you can see, I've sewn it. So from this opening, from this opening, I'm going to turn it to the right side. I'm going to trim out the excess fabric. notch the edges then I'm going to turn it to the right side from the opening With my sheer scissors, I'm going to trim out the excess fabric. So with my needle and thread, I'm going to sew loose stitches to form gathers. When I was trimming it, I left about quarter of an inch away from the stitch line. As you can see, I left about quarter of an inch. So I'm going to sew on this quarter of an inch. I'm going to sew loose stitches to form gathers. So I'm going to start this way. I also left about quarter of an inch away from the edge. So I'm going to I'm going to sew loose stitches. When I sew the loose stitches to about 10 inches, I'm going to pull it and secure the stitch. That's what I did here. 
then I will continue sewing as I sew I pull if I sew up to like 10 inches I'm going to pull it and secure the stitch I will continue with this process till I get to the edge of the strip as I secure the stitch I'm also arranging the rows to the shape that I like when you saw about 10 inches length you pull it you arrange the rows and secure the stitch arrange it properly so after you've gotten the shape you want then I'm going to tack it down this is my rose as you can see it is very easy to make so I'm going to attach this to the back of my cap so I'll take my cap I'm going to attach this to the back of my cap. Opening that I left, that I used to turn it to the right side, I'll stitch the opening down. I folded the edges inside, then I stitch it down. So the next thing to do, you will need a piece of fabric, 10 inches in length by five inches wideness. So the next thing to do, this is the right side of the fabric. I'm going to fold it into two, then I'm going to sew quarter of an inch straight down. Then I'll turn it to the right side. I'll quickly do that and show us the next step to take. So the next thing to do, I'm going to, at the midpoint, the next thing to do, you will measure the midpoint of your cap. I have 10 and a half inches after sewing. So the midpoint is five and quarter. getting the midpoint I'm going to sew loose stitches to form gathers at the midpoint can, can you see the way it formed the bow so I'm going to sew it backward to hold the gathers tightly. So the next thing to do, if you don't have this, I'm going to use this to beautify it at the back, but if you don't have this, you can ignore it. You will just take your long strip and cover this midpoint. This stitch that we made, you will use this long strip to cover it up. 
then I will take to my sewing machine and stitch it down and cut the excess fabric but I still want to beautify it so I'm going to play this like so in between So I'm going to place it like so. Then I'm going to take to my sewing machine. I'm going to stitch it down. Then I'm going to cut out the excess fabric to trim out this excess fabric. So the next thing to do, I'm going to arrange it properly to be at the mid points. I'm going to arrange it properly to be at the middle. This is how it is. So the next thing to do, I'm going to take my, this is the back of the bow. The next thing to do, this is the back of the bow. I'm going to stitch this back of the bow to the back of the cap, exactly the way I stitch this other cap i'm going to do the same thing on this other side as well so with my needle and thread i'm going to stitch them together this is the final outcome of today's tutorial this is the final look on me this is the back view As you can see, it is very easy to make. Let me wear the African print and show us how it looks. This is the African print. This is the back view. As you can see, it is very easy to make. You can also place the both side to the front. So you can place it in front like so. Or you put it at the middle. We've come to an end of today's tutorial. If you find my tutorial helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below if you've not done so. I upload weekly tutorial on my channel. Also remember to click on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified. Until I come your way next, please stay safe and remain blessed. Love you all. Bye.